Dark Angel. Now this series I came into extremely reluctantly and with very, very low expectations. I mean, even though I know this was produced by James Cameron, I never understood Jessica Alba's appeal. I mean, I don't even think she's that attractive. <laughs> Don't stop, up jumps the bucket to the bang bang. Hmm. Sorry about that. So Dark Angel is a story about a character named Max who is basically a genetically engineered superwoman. She is part of the X5 project, which was this government program to create these super soldiers, basically. And um about 12 years ago, a group of them escaped, and now they're living in Seattle post this kind of post-apocalyptic post environment where there was this huge computer crash and all this information got fried, everyone lost their money, and basically it's an apocalypse. Basically an apocalypse. And it's got all these elements of like sci-fi, fantasy, with like hip-hop culture kind of peppered into it. And when I first watched the pilot, I was a little afraid because partly because you know you have the character of Max who is very sensual which is there's nothing a problem with that but I was wondering if that's going to be like the only thing she has going for her would she be a badass would she be able to take fights would she be a complex character and they did it they made the character of Max very compelling and to go back a little bit more is basically a message a ca message carry deliverer working for this really cool for this guy named Normal, who is pretty much, you know, a young Republican nerd, funny. And she works with a bunch of friends. She had, there's Kendra, original Cindy, Sketchy, Herbal. You know, it's a huge cast of characters. And it's a very diverse cast, which I was very, very, very happy about. Because you know I get on that a lot. Um, and what's even more is that they're paid in a, uh, in a positive light. And that was something I was really happy about. Um... Again, to more later. And then on the other hand, we have Logan, who is part of the elite, but he's one of the um, educated elites. The character of Logan runs this kind of program called Eyes Only, which basically um, he finds information about the corrupted officials and things going on in the area and puts them out for the public to see because he owns the only channel that is uncompromised by the government and the corrupted officials thus far. All the while, the leader of the government group, which is known as Manticore, which if you know what a Manticore is, that's a very funny um, parallel, um, is run by a man named Lidecker, Colonel Donald Lidecker, who is trying to find all the X-5 escapees because they are worth a bunch and they're his children in this really odd way. Um, what I liked the most about the character of Max is that she was an anti-hero throughout the entire see the show um the first season because i've only watched the first season i haven't watched the second season yet um she's an anti-heroine completely throughout through i mean she does have a, a moral coil but she isn't ruled by that that she's very street savvy and also very practical she knows she can't save the world she knows that what she's doing makes a difference to a very minute amount of people's lives and she doesn't get worked up about the fact that she can't help everyone at every time it bothers her at times but it doesn't consume her life it doesn't consume her existence because she's so used to living on the fruits of society as it is that she just knows she can't be consumed with that it won't help anyone which gives her good information to play off logan who is very much has this complex of wanting to do better, of trying to save the world, and has a really heroic god complex. He's very much a boy scout. And the two of them playing off each other makes for really good chemistry, not just romantically, but just in the way the characters have to interact and play off of one another. The thing I really liked about Max is that while her powers did have some inconsistencies, you know how it is, you know, one day she could beat up 20 people at once, another time she gets beat up by one. But she did have some very consistent power abilities. What I really loved was the fact of uh, her weakness, which is basically that um, she doesn't produce serotonin naturally because of the way her body was put together, and therefore her body doesn't make it naturally, so she has to drink like milk and get sort of calcium supplements. 
Um, and if she can't get those things, she goes into these kind of seizures and shocks. And there's an episode that goes completely around the fact that she has to keep taking these pills. And it looks like she's a junkie. It looks like she needs a fix. And that her friends try to get her off this stuff and seeing how this affects her and how, you know, she, it's not something that she can just, oh, if I'm strong enough, I can fight through it. No, it'll kill her. It's not a very easy fix. I mean, it is an easy fix. If she gets the medicine, she'll be better. But it's something that she can just fight through or her will will somehow keep her alive. No. She needs this chemical for her body to survive. She doesn't have it. She will die. And it's not a benign threat. It, it appears throughout the series and she comes to these near-death experiences and it's not treated like a little bullshit um, thing. It's a really serious thing. The world that this place takes in is really, really fun. I mean, it is that kind of post-apocalyptic biopunk thing, but it still has structure. You know, you could see how this would exist. You can see how these things would happen. It makes sense. And that's a really important thing when you do any type of world building is that the world that you construct makes legitimate sense. And it does to me. And I get how it works out. The biggest fear I had when I was looking at the secondary characters was that even though it had like original Cindy who's a black lesbian, Herbal who's a Rastafarian, you know, worrying that they would be stereotypes, especially original Cindy because she speaks in the slang and all that kind of stuff and when it first appeared in the pile I was like, oh god, please do not let this be one of those kind of things. But as it develops you realize that this is part of how everyone is and you see her have a relationship with another woman. A sexual relationship with another woman and a complex loving relationship with another woman. And even though certain things happen that may look like killing off your gaze, it's not really like that. At least I never found it to be like that even though I could see why other people might feel that way. Um, she was treated like a real character. She was not just some stereotype. She had layers to her. And herbal, you know, how many times do you see like the Rastafarian who only smokes weed, all that kind of stuff. But he was like this really cool spiritual person who you know, was a Rastafarian. It was part of his religion, it was part of his faith. I'm sad that he's not going to be back for a second season according to what I've read online. And I really loved him. And all the rest of the characters were really well put together. The X5 children themselves, I really loved the way that they were kind of made up. The way that they're about, I think about 12 of them. When you look at the X5 children, what I really loved about the way that they were put together, or I don't know if the people who cast them kept this in consideration, but they all can blend in really easily. With the exception of maybe a few who are put for like European boundaries, they, you have a variety of people who look like they could sneak into different situations or going to different countries without being seen because they either look really ambiguous or they have those kind of familiar looks that they can go into, all right, Zack would be able to infiltrate anywhere in like Europe. But then you have characters like Max and one of her other sisters who are racially ambiguous and so that they can go into different places of the world that maybe Zack and otherwise would get looks from. And I don't know if that was an intentional thing when they were doing the casting. That's one of the things that kind of came to mind when I was watching the show that they picked, they, they, they made people and, ver and made a variety of people so they could have soldiers for every part of the world. And I also love how they function as a family unit, but also had to struggle with the fact that they were also soldiers. And this came into more effect with the character of Zack. And even though I kind of was frustrated with his character in the beginning, by the end of the season and in the season finale, I was in love with his character and I had completely gone gaga and was tearing up for him. And I have to say, this season finale for this show is amazing. I mean, it, it really sets up season two in a really good way, but you also see Max's hopes and dreams in it in a way that, you know, it seems almost like too, it, what do you see is too good to be true because you're like, oh, there's no way it could end this perfectly. But you kind of want it to because of all the struggles they've been through is like, yes, it'll be this beautiful, magical thing. And then you watch it and you're like, oh my god, they threw you for a goddamn loop. But this show is a little bit of everything. It's got science fiction, you know, it's got um that kind of tech feel, post-apocalyptic, it's got a really diverse cast. I think once you get, to, um, because I have the complete season, I think once you get past the first um three episodes do you really get a feel for the show um if you don't get into it by episode one um by episode three flushed i think it would be really sad because i went through this series very quickly and i really enjoyed it and as i said before i did not expect much from it because i don't like jessica alba and i don't think she's that great of an actress in her movies but she really sells 
her role here. I don't know maybe if she peed because she's only 19 in this and she was a babe. Like for real. But um but I don't know. She managed to bring something to this role that I never thought she could bring because she never plays this kind of character in anything else. You know, she's horrible in Fantastic Four and most other things. But I really loved her as this character and I really felt like she sold this role. And so I wonder why she hasn't done as impressive stuff since then. Or maybe the character is written in a way that I don't notice her acting not being as good. I mean, there are times where it's kind of like off, but she's never horrible. And I think that she pretty much sells the kind of badass role that she's trying to portray. And I hope that she can go back to doing this kind of work, but I doubt it because she's kind of been unsuccessful in other endeavors. But I really, really enjoyed her in this movie. And I think that even if you might have doubts about Jessica Alba being a good actress, I don't think it will deviate from your enjoyability of this show. I think she, this is the best thing she's been in. And I think you should check it out. It's a really enjoyable show. So yeah, Dark Angel. Definitely, definitely go get this. Um, I have...